Rick Lord here for Rick Lord TV and Movie Light Photography Behind the Scenes. Today I'm in the studio with an HMI lighting instrument. I am frequently asked, what is an HMI? What do the letters HMI stand for? And is an HMI an appropriate lighting instrument for digital photography? Before we talk about HMI applications, it's best to first learn a little bit about what makes this particular lighting instrument tick. The first thing to learn is what the letters HMI stand for. HMI is an acronym for Hydrogerum Medium Arc Length Iodide. It is a specific type of lamp. Simply put, the HMI is a metal halide high intensity discharge lamp. Because it's an arc type light, its output is in the daylight spectrum. In other words, the HMI color temperature is rated at 5600 degrees Kelvin, roughly the same color temperature that you would experience on a sunny midday afternoon. Because the HMI is an arc type light, its output is considerably more powerful than say its same wattage counterpart in tungsten. The HMI comes in both PAR and Fresnel configurations of which each has their own pros and cons. This particular instrument is a 575 Fresnel HMI. It's designed with a traveling carriage for focusing and a Fresnel lens by which the light is aimed through. Motion picture lighting instruments such as this are typically referred to by their wattage output. In this case, this HMI is a 575 watt instrument. As I earlier mentioned, the output of the HMI is considerably more powerful compared to its electrical draw. The output for this particular lamp would be equivalent to a 2000 watt tungsten Fresnel. There are three basic components to the HMI. The ballast, the head feeder, and of course the head itself, the lamp. Ballasts are designed in a couple of different configurations, either electronic or magnetic. Again, both have their pros and cons. The magnetic ballast is fairly trouble free. However, it's also very heavy to carry around for any measurable distance. There are also some flicker issues if you're using magnetic ballast for motion picture applications. In this case, this is an electronic ballast. It's quite a bit lighter and has flicker free settings for 24 frames per second usage. In other words, motion picture. Now the downside of electronic ballasts is they are somewhat temperamental. It's important to handle electronic ballasts like a carton of eggs. In other words, handle them with care. This particular ballast, as you can see, is multifunctional. It comes with two separate wattage settings and connections. If there were a 1200 watt HMI, I could run it instead. It's important to understand these are either or connections. You cannot run both a 575 and a 1200 at the same time. Also on the front of this unit is the igniter button. At the back of the ballast is the power cord, of which you'll notice is designed for household 110 volt power for operation here in the US. Also is the main power switch. The second component is the head feeder. The head feeder is nothing more than a multi-pin cable that distributes the transform power and igniter signals to the head. The cables are typically 25 feet in length and a lot of the time come two cables to a light for a total reach of 50 feet. Obviously, I only need one cable for this particular demonstration. Finally, we come to the head. Now, I've removed the barn doors for easier observation. The lens is a Fresnel type lens with a ring that incorporates the ears and bail for the barn doors. There's also a latch on the side so the lens assembly can be opened to allow for bulb replacement access. At the back of the head, you'll see there are two switches, a green switch and a red switch. The light can be ignited by pressing the green switch and shut down by pressing the red switch. Also at the back of the head is the focus knob. As with any Fresnel, the beam of light can be focused from a wide pattern to a tight pattern by simply turning the knob. Finally, we come to the head. Now I've removed the barn doors for easier observation. Here we are at the front of the ballast. We have two connectors. One is a 575 watt connector, the other is a 1200 watt connector. Since we have a 575 HMI, we're going to use the 575 side connector. It's a female pin connector. We have a switch in the middle that designates the, the power source. In this case, it's the 575. We're going to take the, the head feeder, plug it into the 575 side. There's a keyway. You line it up and you twist lock this into position, just like so. 
Here we are at the other end of the head feeder and at the back of the lamp itself or the head. We're going to take the, the head feeder and plug it into the back of the lamp. There is a keyway back here that you have to watch for and line up. Once you get them lined up, it's the same thing, it's a twist lock. Most head feeders have ropes tied to the end of them. Take the rope and slide it down a little bit. In this case, we're going to use this rope as a strain relief. We're going to tie it around the yoke of the lamp, just like so, and we're going to put a half bow in this so we can untie it later, it's not a knot, just like so. Now, if somebody were to take and trip over this, they're not going to pull the electronics out of the back of the light. Once we have the head feeder connected to the ballast and to the head of the lamp, it's time to power up the ballast. Simply plug the Edison plug into the power and we're good to go there. Once that is done, you can turn the power on for the ballast. Now we have power to the ballast. Now, the light is not lit yet. We actually have to ignite that. Once we've powered up the ballast, it's time to ignite the light. Simply press the green button on the back of the 575 and you can hear it powering up. Give this light about 10 minutes and it'll be up to full temperature. As you can see, the HMI has one bright light. Probably one of the neatest lights you'll ever have in your arsenal. I hope this segment answers some of your questions concerning the functionality of the HMI. I invite you to watch part two as we'll be working with the HMI on location on a very simple setup. Don't forget to check out my book at movielightphotography.com. There's much more information on this and many other lighting scenarios.